in this video, I'm comparing the Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G with the OnePlus Nord N200 5G. Yes, these are very long names for these phones, but these are two powerful budget 5G devices, really great devices, and I'm comparing them head to head to see what the differences are and which one should you get and what stands out, what are the improvements per, per over the previous ones and over each other. So let's go ahead and take a look. So one big thing about these phones and in this video is basically saying that you do not have to spend a lot of money if you wanna get a, get a good quality 5G device. There's no excuse to spend over 400 to $500 on a quality 5G device. The $1,000 phones are getting a real threat from these particular devices. They are coming fast, they are coming furious. Um, the flagship phones have nowhere to hide. Both of these devices are a perfect example of that these phones could do everything that anybody, 99% of people want them to do, all your apps, everything, and it's just a great example of um, how far we've come with budget devices and having 5G and all that stuff. The $1,000 phones are in a, they're in a big hole here, and uh, I'm going to tell you all the specs about these devices and see what you think. Um, if you want to spend a thousand dollars on your next device or less than 500 on these so the big thing about both of these phones is that they're budget 5g devices and the price is crucial so the moto g stylus 5g is an upgrade for the previous moto g stylus that was 4g lte only and this one comes in at 400 dollars unlocked and you can get it from amazon or motorola now the oneplus nord n200 5g comes in even at a sweeter price uh, that comes in at around 240 bucks and you're getting one plus is cheapest 5g device and for a lot of people that means a lot um, so price wise the n200 5g is right off the boat way better uh, than the moto g stylus 5g in the value department but if the moto g stylus 5g uh, is on prepaid on metro it's probably going to compare very very closely with the n200 5g and i suspect both of these devices will be in the sub 50 dollar category if you port in your number so that's a really good thing about these devices you can probably get them for either free up to 50 bucks which is a good deal so the moto g stylus 5g it is uh, overall size is around 6.7 6.7 inches tall, 3 inches wide, 0.37 inches thick. Very typical in an average smartphone size these days. Same thing with the N200, 6.4 inches tall, um, 2.9 inches uh, wide, 0.33 inches thick. So overall dimensions, the N200 is a little bit slimmer. The uh, Stylus 5G is 7.6 ounces, so it's kind of heavy compared to the 6.6 .6 ounces in the N200 5G, but not by much. It's just a little bit weightier on the Stylus 5G. For the build quality, both of these are rocking um, a glass front with a plastic back, which is typical at, the, at these price points. They are not flagships, but um, that's, you know, from a practical standpoint, these don't have glass, so they won't break as easily. And especially if you're going to slap a, a case on these, um, it's not really going to matter. Uh, plus that case is going to add some um, grip to it. The Moto G Stylus IG is a nano single SIM card phone, while the N200 is a dual SIM phone. So that's one advantage there. But the Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G, like in its name, has a stylus. So that's what makes this phone stand out and it makes it the uh, budget version of the Note series from Samsung. It's basically the only alternative if you don't want to spend $1,000 on a, um, a phone with a stylus with 5G now that LG is out of the game. So that's one big difference between these phones, um, having that stylus. Uh, makes it stand out. It's good if you want to take notes or you want to have fine detail in drawing or uh, instead of using your finger and stuff like that. But those are the two things uh, that kind of make this phone stand out is that it's 5G budget, uh, you know, stylus. The, um, it's the competition to the Samsung series Note. So you also get the overall size on the 
Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G. It's a very huge screen. You got 6.8 inches um, with a 60 hertz LCD display with 85% screen to body ratio. The N200 has a slightly smaller screen at 6.5 inches, but it has 90 hertz refresh rate. So you got a more responsive screen on the N200, but you get a bigger screen on the Moto G Stylus 5G. And you also get more screen to body ratio on the Motorola. Uh, which has 85% versus the 83% on the OnePlus. Um, these, they both have a great resolution. They're both 1080p Full HD displays. Um, the Moto G Stylus has 387 PPI density, which is okay. Um, the N200 has 406 PPI density, so anything close in the 400 range is pretty good. Now for the software, both of these are running very similar versions of Android. Uh, they're both rocking Android 11. Um, you got Motorola gestures uh, that's stock pretty much on Motorola, very standard as the, the karate chop for the flashlight, you got the twist for the camera. Um, the Nord N, the, the OnePlus Nord N200 has Oxygen OS, which is a stock version of Android as well, um, which its own features, but they're very, these versions of Android are very stock, uh, so they compare very good to each other, very clean, very fast and fluid. Except that when it comes to updates, um, I suspect that the OnePlus Nord N200 5G is probably going to get uh, an upgrade to 12 and possibly 13, while Motorola, it's, it's probably going to be sad, but it's probably not going to get any fast updates at all. Uh, as for the chipset, both of these are rocking the Snapdragon 480 5G, which is a lower end mid range processor for 5G phones. But it's not terrible, but it's not flagship either. You'll be very happy with it for the average person. It'll happily run um, great performance for 99% of apps in the App Store with no problem. For the storage, big difference here. You got 256 gigs of internal storage on the Motorola, which is huge. That is super nice. That's probably a big standoff feature on this phone versus only 64 gigs of storage on the N200, which is okay. Um, 64 gigs should be good for a lot of people, but man, 256 gigs on the Motorola just kills it. Um, you get six gigs of RAM on the Motorola versus the four gigs of RAM on the N200. Um, both of these amounts of RAM are pretty good. Um, except obviously you're going to run into less um, apps closing in the background with six gigs. Luckily, both of these phones have micro SD card slot, which is awesome. Flagships don't have that anymore. For the camera setup, the Motorola has a quad camera setup, 48 megapixel main, eight megapixel ultra wide, five megapixel macro, two megapixel depth. And 200 has three cameras, 13 megapixel main camera, two megapixel macro, two megapixel depth. And they both shoot in 1080p full HD, you know, full HD video taking. Now, both of these are not flagship level quality photo and video taking machines. But if you're in the daytime or if you have great light, these will be very, very um, average and pretty good in some situations. Just, you know, these phones are pretty much a lot of budget uh, to mid range. Uh, Android phones are terrible at night, so just keep that in mind. But if I had to pick between these two, I'm going to say that the Motorola Moto, uh, G, the Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G, and it's a long name. It's probably going to have an overall better camera setup, especially with that um, ultra wide. Uh, gives it a big difference in uh, options for the camera. Also for the selfie, you both get 60 megapixel shooters for both, and they both shoot at 1080p. So same. Um, pretty much the same camera for the selfie on both of these. You both get headphone jacks on both of these, which is great. You can connect your headphones, your mic, um, connect it to your car via aux cord to listen to music. So you got a little bit of backup if you uh, run out of juice on your wireless devices. And they both come with Bluetooth, so both of these devices will connect happily to your headphones, your smartwatch, your smart band, your smart speakers, or whatever. Uh, they will connect great. Um, you get no NFC on the Motorola, but you do get it on the N200. Both of these have USB Type-C for the charging port. Same port found on iPads and tablets and uh, laptops and MacBooks and Chromebooks and all that stuff. As for the fingerprint and unlocking and security, they both have a side-mounted fingerprint reader, um, which is going to be a reliable, okay way of unlocking your device. 
Um, last but not least is the battery. Both of these are rocking big batteries, 5,000 milliamps, which is, I'm very pleased with that. Any 5G device coming out in 2021 should have a 5,000 milliamp battery um, at the minimum um, because 5G uses a lot of juice and with having these uh, lower to mid range specs, 5,000 milliamp battery will go a long way and that's very important. Except that the Moto G Stylus uh, 5G uh, charges at 10 watts while the you get faster charging at 18 watts on the Nord N200. So battery wise, a little bit of an edge on the N200 5G. So what are my thoughts and comparing both of these devices with going through the specs? Well, both of these are definitely good buys for the average person. I think 99% of people will be well served by both of these devices. You're getting 5G at a sub $400 price on both of these, but it gets more intriguing when it comes to a prepaid. Um, you can get, you're probably gonna get these devices for zero to free, or I'm sorry, zero to free, zero to $50 if you go and switch your number to prepaid on Metro, which basically both of these predecessor phones on these devices were on and that's what i'm leaning towards is that you can get these phones for less than 50 bucks when you're porting a number at that price both of these are a go um the one standout feature on the on these phones that make a big difference is going to be the stylus and that big screen on the motorola that is pretty huge for a lot of people it really makes this phone stand out from the crowd the only other phones well-known phones that have a stylus that are relevant are the Samsung Note series, but those phones are like $1,000. And we're not talking about these $1,000 phones in this video or a lot of my videos. Uh, flagships are really getting threatened by these mid-range to budget priced phones. They're doing, they work almost exactly the same as these flagships, but offer a lot of value. Um, the one big standout on the Nord N200 5G is probably going to be just the the reputation that oneplus has they are very very um they come out with very good products at a, and this price point of 240 dollars unlocked that's going to be the cheapest price you'll find a 5g device from a well-known carrier and the look of the phone of the n200 5g it feels like you're going to have a oneplus uh, nine you know an 800 flagship device in your hand but on paper, both of these are pretty good. Uh, if you care about internal storage, the stylus just blows it out of the water. So if that's something you care about, but uh, both of these are very intriguing. But as of uh, this video, there's no word at when the Moto G Stylus 5G will be sold at prepaid, but you can get it right now for 400 bucks. The Nord N200, I mean, that price point is very intriguing at $240, and you're probably gonna get more updates in the Motorola. And you can actually, it's not, hasn't come out yet, but it's going to come out soon. And it has been confirmed for that 240 bucks unlock. But uh, in the end, both of these are gonna be available on prepaid and that's where it gets really intriguing. So, I mean, it's, it's if you want that stylus, you know, it's very intriguing. And the storage, the, the Motorola is a phone to get. But that price point, at, uh, if you want it fully unlocked, is very good on the Nord N200 5G. So thanks for watching, guys. That's been my comparison, and I'll see you in the next one.